Chairperson, our host, the Honorable Minister of Social Welfare, Mrs. Melrose Kaminti, who doubled as my wife, and I am her wife too. You know, Moyamba and Kono, they decided to swap. We took Melrose and then born, um, Moyamba took me. I know you won't understand. Mario's husband is from Kono, Madam Liu's mother is from Moyamba. So we swap. Honorable Minister, the Deputy Minister of um, Finance, representative of the UN Resident Coordinator, of course, Madam Nadia, representative of the UN Office on Drugs and Crime, um, our development partners here present, representative of other government departments and agencies here present, civil society and NGOs from uh, non-state actors present, members of the various media houses, um, of course our diplomatic corps, the, ambas the American ambassador, the EU ambassador, um, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all. I'm overwhelmed with mixed feelings standing in front of you today at this event. I'm joyful like any other person when you are appreciated and honored, which is what the Ministry of Social Welfare and her partners has done by this recognition. What is common among mankind all over the world is to praise you when you are dead and then all of your good deeds become amplified and gloriously expressed. The minister and her team has started fit to accord me what they and many other appreciate of my effort in dealing with human trafficking and other areas of my work that advance the issues of women and girls. I'm very proud but humbled at the same time to be named the national anti-human trafficking champion. As you are aware, anti-human trafficking is one of the pillars in the Hands of Ideas campaign. Please allow me to express my sincere appreciation and thanks to the Minister of Social Welfare and the Anti-Trafficking in Person Secretariat headed by the Honorable Minister, Madam Melrose Kaminti. Today, let me assure you publicly that I am more than ever prepared to team up with the Ministry of Social Welfare and engage in preventive advocacy to combat the trafficking of human beings in our country. I am deeply honored and proud to be part of a process that ensures positive rehabilitation is provided to victims of human trafficking. So now let me share with you my sadness. As we are gathered here, there is a serious matter which has caught the attention of the Syrian police involving a 17-year-old girl following an alleged sex trafficking. We will assign the name Susan, which is not her real name, and to meet the child protection standard. I am reliably informed that in November of 2021, Susan was lured by a 28-year-old trafficker who alleged to have promised the unsuspecting girls of facilitating her to travel to Dubai to study computer science. Two weeks later, it is further reported that the alleged trafficker facilitated the movement of the girl from one of the villages up country to Freetown where she was harbored at a secret location for the past two years and subjected to repeated sexual assault. By local calculation, Susan had been around 15 years when the traffickers trapped her into sexual slavery. The current report and situation of Susan, according to the Syrian police, she is reported to have aborted two pregnancies from her capture to now. As I speak, I am informed and assured that the Syrian police is investigating the matter, including trying to know the person who carried out the alleged abortion. Madam Chairperson, our development partners, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you will all agree with me that Susan is obviously one of the many trafficked victims in the country. 
and therefore should benefit from a trust fund dedicated to victims' rehabilitation and integration into society. This is imperative for trauma these victims go through and they obviously need trauma-informed care. You must ensure that victims like Susan need empathic social workers and mental health practitioners who understand what trauma is and use that knowledge to talk with victims, help in the healing of their psychological wounds and prepare them for a transformative life back into our communities. In the case of Susan, she needs medical attention and support to continue her schooling. Above all, she needs justice to send a clear message to potential traffickers that there are grave consequences for anyone who engages in human trafficking in this country. The trafficking situation in Sierra Leone is that we have both reported and unreported cases of human trafficking involving women, men, boys and girls, including persons with disability. It will interest you to know that Sierra Leone is not unique and not the only country affected by trafficking in human beings. According to the International Labour Organization, about 49.6 million people were trapped in some form of human slavery in 2021. 27.6 million of those people were in forced labour and 22 million in forced marriage of the 27.6 million people in forced labor, 6.3 million were victims of commercial sex exploitations. This is just to give you a gist of the horror in human trafficking. A chairperson and our development partners, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want at this point call on call all of us to action. First, it is imperative we understand that there is an urgent need to come together in a global partnership to combat this heinous crime meted by criminals to vulnerable groups in our society. We must raise the requisite awareness about this terrible act, including the common tracks and red flags, so that our people become aware and sensitive about it and therefore better positioned to respond. Secondly, we must get ourselves involved in finding solutions that will address the existing condition of vulnerability in our various countries which triggers trafficking. My appeal to all Sierra Leoneans is that we need to work together as one nation and as a family and must make Sierra Leone stable and peaceful. This is the only way we will be able to reduce poverty in our population to sustain economic development and societal transformation. Now, before I close my speech, please permit me also, because I know a lot of people in this country normally goes to my media houses and listen to what's been said. And because my grandmother who lives in that village does not understand English, let me speak to my people. Today we did talk about trafficking in person. I know see me, mama and my papa, they don't even understand that word they say trafficking in person. Now that one won't take always to take on a picking them give them for women. Or they give on a take on a picking them, they go give them for women, then they go take on a village, then come with them. So tell them not even come out in the village. So tell them they just take them in your village, move to another street, then go keep picking them, and the only thing that they do with them, now for the sleep with them day and night. Then you go there in a village, they think say somebody there out there will they can look after you picking. Time not come for low be responsible parents also. And this tiredness where the woman then end. Because I will always talk to the woman then because I know say where woman concentrate on in picking. Nobody know the torture. Now the time not reach so for low we know say yes. Men picking now not in a fashion. Not tired. If you don't carry your picking and your belly. You don't suffer till you bought that bikini. You don't make your bikini till you don't work out. You don't thin up. You don't begin to do something for yourself. Then somebody can. They can tell you, say, just when the bikini is about to be independent person, they can tell you, say, give me your bikini that will mena. If you don't make your bikini till you begin to reach 15 years, I believe, say, you don't go tired for many bikini till you reach 18. Then you finish in secondary school and then you're able for no say yes. The decision we did make now in your decision, not all that person they make up for us. We all work in camp and then program here. 
we can come, we listen. But we can take the message to the people then. We can actually go talk to the people then. And the reason why I take this anti-trafficking issue very seriously, because through anti-trafficking, we the end up forget as many young girls as possible into forced marriage. And through forced marriage, you not get no choice but for whatever picking they become pregnant. And when picking become pregnant, the possibility of that picking for die is almost 90%. So for now we stop this. For now we mortuary stop for be full with picking them, small small picking them. Again for me we all the responsibility. This is not a Melrose community one in job. This is not every Sierra Leonean in job. You cannot just love yourself and don't love your neighbor. What do you want for you, your picking? We shall for another person in picking. How you want your picking for better? Make sure, say, you make other person in your picking because you don't know if now your neighbor in picking and for benefit you tomorrow. So let we look out for each other. And the one thing is, where I begin for talk, they say you don't come back. Well, the good thing, now I vote for Mother Bill, so I am in your face for the next five years. Please, if you don't want me to come after you, stay away from our children. Now, you see me and the rapist then, now run race, now with him. If you touch me, picking, I'll come after you. And from today, me and anti-traffickers, we are now the new neighbors. Watch me, I'll be watching you. And they say, this one is even steep. Because with Ray, you are going for 15 years. This one is 25 years. So it is time for law we begin for make law with people they know this. And the next campaign, as we start to roll out the sanitary power distribution, we will go to every district and every corner. Just as people they talk about the hands of our girls, we now make them know the hands of our girls is part of the anti-trafficking. So that they see this and know say, I know they just open the mouth and talk home. Now two issues a day, we day in this country today. The other one, they let mother be take care of them. But then two the day. If I know that the next five years, we will not get for stop. You will not go do traffic in the beginning. And you will not marry our children off without their own consent. These are the two issues that I will be championing for this year. This the next, I mean, as long as Mother Bill is the president of this country. So if you can, if you want to keep your residence, please allow me to speak. And when I come to your door, if you don't want to see my face, close your eyes and just listen. Allow your ears to listen. At least so you understand. Tomorrow you won't say somebody told me. You will say Fatima told me herself. Stay away from our children. And then listen, Mama, they're waiting at the village then. You not stop for you, not picking them, for that they can keep them as city. Because this part now complete laziness. When you talk, they say na 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 poverty. Anytime when we talk, they say poverty. Now, if poverty kill people, go to India and tell me just one street is the population of Sierra Leone. And now calculate the number of poverty that is, in, that is in India. You cannot eradicate poverty if you are not willing to do it. As Sierra Leoneans, it is our job. No matter how many times people give us handouts, it will be handouts. We have to do it ourselves. So when the president talks about the five big changes, it's for every Sierra Leonean to embrace it. It is not for APC or SNPP or NGC or whatever, no. And when we talk about trafficking in person, we are not talking about just oh, from the south or the east. We are talking about Sierra Leone because trafficking in person, the people that have been trafficked are from all over this country. So you don't know when it's going to be at your own doorstep. So don't turn your face and say, well, it is not my child, so I don't care, because you don't know. You don't know when it will come to your doorstep. Please, today we're here to launch. We're here to launch because we needed to launch and raise funds. Raise funds for this matter because there are so many victims out there that need our support. And why I am so passionate about this is that when they talk about raising funds, People will say, well, where would you get the fund? And I will say to you, we've just, we're almost a 
about to finish a $10 million hospital at the 34. And guess what? It is the people that paid for that money and we are having the best hospital in this country. So it can be done. It can be done. When Sierra Leoneans come together and say we want to change things, it can be done. So let's not just depend on projects. Let's not just depend on handouts. Because together, that your one million, that your ten million, honestly, you'll be surprised how many lives you'll change. And don't say because it is not my government, so why should I put my money there? The money you will be putting to the anti-trafficking is not the government. You'll be helping innocent children. You'll be supporting to change the lives of young people. We don't want these victims. We don't want them to be victims. But the thing is, when you fight evil, evil fight back. When you go after them, they find a way to come after you. When I started the Hands of Agnes campaign, when they want to trip at them, when they want to make it look foolish, they started on social media telling me, tell your children to take their hands off our pockets. Just because they want to ridicule what we were doing. But when we started blocking them up in prison, then they realized that their pocket will not even save them from going to prison. So please, I'm saying this to all our school children. The child that your, your friend that sits next to you might be in trouble and they can only rely on you to save them. When you hear your friend talk about, oh, my uncle has come to take me to the city, ask questions. And if you are not comfortable, go to your teacher and alert them and say, look, my friend is about to go, but I am still not sure why she or he is going. We are now saying that the hearts of our girls is our girls, our pride, our boys, our allies. So please, let's really work as allies and protect one another. To conclude, as I end my speech, I want to stress that the need and essence of a trust fund therefore must not be overemphasized. Furthermore, it is not just having a trust fund for the rehabilitation of victims of human trafficking, but more importantly, to operationalize that fund in order to foster potential trafficking by ensuring that targeted persons, vulnerable groups and communities get livelihoods. Other social safety support mechanisms that will prevent combat and eradicate this menace from within us. As I'm about to launch the, the Trust Fund, I want at this juncture make a rallying call to our government and I am very happy the minister, the deputy minister here representing the minister of finance and guess what, I mean she's a woman so she understand. <laughs> you know, his representative is here, our development partners who have been partners in everything that we do in this country, the UN family, the United States of America, European Union, Irish Embassy and others as well as the private sector as well as the private sector, you know, both I mean, banks like Google Commercial Banks, Radio Commercial Banks, all the other foreign banks, all of them have a social corporate responsibility. And if you want to do good, this is one way you can do good for our country. You cannot just be taking profit. Please give us some. We need this trust fund like yesterday, and we really must do this now. I now have a singular opportunity honor and privilege to launch the victim of human trafficking trust fund in Sierra Leone. As we continue to pray that we don't have victims, but we know they are going to be victims, what we will do is we will fight the perpetrators and make sure they know it is not business as usual anymore. May God bless you all and may God bless you.